Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at the fatigue tool for static structural analysis in ANSYS. So uh, the topic of fatigue is a large topic and by no means I want to cover that in this video. Just want to show you how to use the tool in ANSYS, but just briefly, two of the major things that you do in fatigue tool, one is determine the life of the part. And the second one is to find like a safety factor, right? And determine the safety factor for uh, the parts for different elements and uh, use different uh, methods of predicting failure like Goodman, like Gerber, like Soderberg, ASME elliptic and so on. So just, I provided the curves here. You're welcome to uh, go and read more. These uh, charts are all coming from the book Mechanical Design, uh, Machine Design by Shigley. So uh, the first thing is the SN curve or the strength versus cycles, right? Which is typically a semi-log chart, right? On the vertical axis, you have the strength of the part under fatigue. And on the horizontal axis in logarithmic scale, you have the number of cycles. And you know that the strength of the material due to fatigue and the growth of small cracks in the body over time due to cycling load, cyclic load, it is going to go down. For some material, it is going to stay at a constant value and never goes down further. So they have an infinite life like steel and this uh, strength that the like the lowest that the strength of the material can go and doesn't go below that, we call it the endurance limit, SE. Some material don't have SE, and this curve completely goes down until it hits zero, and so they have always a finite life, right? Which is typically below 10 to the 7 or 10 million cycles. And so uh, if you know how, many, uh, how much is going to be the stress on the part, right if you know the stress on the part then from this simple curve you can determine how many cycles and if you know how fast the part cycle is changing you can find the time that the uh, part is going to go through and uh, basically you can find the life of the part before it fails due to uh, fatigue all of a sudden so that's one of the things and the other thing is these different methods of determining basically um, the safety factor for a part that has endurance limits. So here, um, if the stress is fully reversible, right, so it's completely like a sine wave, so it goes to max and then goes to mean and it's completely cyclic like this, then uh, you can take the average of the max and mean stress to find the average stress and the difference between the two uh, divided by two to find the basically the amplitude of the variation right sigma a and then using sigma a and sigma m as well as the strength of the part which is se the endurance limit and either sy the yield strength or sut the ultimate strength Using uh, one of these four methods, you can find the safety factor N, which is what you calculate in ANSYS. And if you look at them, right, so you have this line here, which is for Soderberg, then you have ASME elliptic, then you have the modified Goodman, and then you have the Gerber. And if you look at Gerber, Gerber kind of gives you a, a little bit uh, less conservative right it allows more regions to be explored in the um, s uh, y s or s e s m basically or sigma a sigma m uh, chart right and then soderberg kind of is the least uh, uh, basically lenient it's the most conservative one so based on any of these four methods you can find a safety factor. And the relations are for three of them. Uh, for Gerber, actually, in the ASME, they are quadratic relations. For uh, Goodman and the Soderberg, they are linear relations or a line that you can see. So I don't want to get into calculations of these or anything. Just wanted to show you these curves. So when we talk about the safety factor and when we talk about the S and the curve, at least you have some idea. So here what I did is uh, I have this uh, simple part again. 
this beam with the um, uh, hole in it and we want to subject this to a uh, cyclic load and see the uh, life in it and the safety factor. Now the SN curve as I said is typically semi-logarithmic. In ANSYS is by default the SN curve is log-log. If you want you can change it so what you need to do is go to engineering data and then here you see the SN curve, you can expand it and then instead of the interpolation log log, you can change it to semi log. Okay, so if you want it to have it semi log, you can have it like that. And then once you go here into this model, the static structural. So here you see I have calculated the stress and everything. Now one of the things you can do is you right click, go to insert and then you go to fatigue and insert the fatigue tool. Okay, and uh, one thing is I want to make sure that the mesh I have is fine enough. So uh, let me uh, create a sizing for it because last time in my previous video you saw that I need to bring the size down. So. I would uh, use some 200 mils. And the other thing, I do a refinement uh, near this one and this one. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Now, when you want to solve in fatigue, you have to provide the type of analysis that you want, right? So you right click here and say insert. And then what is it that you want to see? Do you want to see life? Do you want to see safety factor or what? So I want to see life and I also want to see safety factor. And uh, here you see uh, that uh, if you look at the stress, it is going to a max and then the mean and the mean is like negative of the max. And this is the option called fully reversed. So if you click on this fatigue tool, the option, the type that we have is fully reversed. You have other types too. If you want, you can look at the ratio, which is the ratio between sigma A and sigma M. If you want, you can provide those. You can make it zero base, right? So uh, here, for simplicity, we use the fully uh, reversed, which is like one of the simplest cases. Uh, that's one of the things you have to uh, choose here under fatigue tool before you run it. The other one is, do you want to do it based on a stress or a strain? Here we want to do it based on a stress. The other one is, which one of the theories do you want to use for safety factor, right? So you can choose that. Let's say I want the Goodman method, which is a very common method, or no, I want the ASME elliptical, right? And then you can say uh, one cycle equals to what, right? So here, if you want to really talk about time. So here, let's say just one cycle is one cycle, right? And uh, then we can convert it later. But uh, if you set this up, then you can go ahead and solve for this problem. And um, here, if you look at life, it shows that the life basically goes anywhere from a million cycle to 27,000. And of course, you have to use the minimum, right? Because once the fatigue kicks in and breaks the part, you really can only have that much. So 27,000 cycles is what this part is going to go under the amount of stress you have right now. Okay, if I reduce this force, this part is going to basically live longer. And I'll do that. The other thing is safety factor. And safety factor, you see, it's anywhere from 0.4 to 15. And 0.4 is not a good safety factor, right? That shows that your part is going to break under fatigue. And it is going to happen in this area. So this area is your weak area. This is where you have maximum bending stress and the part is going to break there. You also have some areas here too, but clearly this area has a lot more. So I know that this part is not going to uh, endure as many cycles as I want. And the safety factor is not above one all. So I need to either bring down my force or make my part thicker. Now here, let me just bring down the force a little bit, right? So uh, I make it like one. Let's bring the load down by a factor of two. See how it works on safety factor and life. And then uh, 
we can change that as well for even smaller or we can as i said we can always make the part thicker in real life typically the force is given to you you need to change the geometry but here you see that now my uh, life is 40 4.7 10 to the 5. so now i am at 471 thousand cycles and my safety factor is now 0.87 right so if i want to have uh, here a safety factor of more than one I clearly need to change this one to something like for example 70 or so right this should uh, probably bring the safety factor above one everywhere and um, then the life is going to be even longer okay so you see the life is now 1 million cycle and above and the safety factor is nowhere below one so this part i can say is uh, at least up to a million uh, cycles it's relatively safe for um, your uh, basically calculations and you see design life is up to uh, 1 times 10 to the 9 cycles so minimum safety factor is that and if you look at the life the minimum life is a million cycles okay so uh, this is relatively good in terms of fatigue design hopefully this video was useful to you i will see you in my next lecture